But yeah, like I was saying, uh, Angular V15 is out um, pretty much on schedule with every release, every, you know, kind of their six months or so cadence. And this is a pretty big release, I must say, as far as the number of uh, features and things that were packed into this uh, release. And it kind of goes through some of these things in the, in the blog post, of course, written by Minko. Uh, the first th big thing being standalone APIs are now stable um, and standalone APIs for components, pipes and directives has really been something that has um, gained a lot of popularity in the Angular ecosystem uh, for, for good reason, because it reduced the number of things that you have to do to build an application with Angular. And uh, standalone APIs is part of, uh, I think it's part of a bigger effort to make Angular easier to learn. So uh, as opposed to using modules before, now we can bootstrap applications directly. And we can also, it, it also uh, create APIs, not fully across the board, but a lot of the places that needed a module, you can uh, use those, the new APIs for those. Um, and we'll get into some of those down a little further here. A couple of them being the router and HTTP client. And before uh, you can see here in the bigger here, now you can bootstrap the page with the bootstrap application and provide router as opposed to using the router module dot for root pattern with ng modules from previous. And uh, you can also do other things like lazy load routes directly from the route config, lazy load individual components, that is, uh, from the route config. And you can also lazy load an array of routes uh, there. So it, uh, it allows you to, a lot, a lot less things that you have to do to uh, uh, lazy load individual components or just lazy load a set of routes, of course, with the modules being gone. Uh, another thing that they did add for the router was tree shakeable uh, features in that the provide router takes a set of routes and also takes the additional features that you can add, whether it be preloading or um, other features that the router may need. You may need for your particular router in a particular project, uh, but you don't have to pay that penalty or pay that cost up front just for using the router. So definitely excited about that. Uh, there's also the, of course, the directive composition API. Now, I think that the directives is one of Angular's like biggest strengths as far as features that allow you to like augment the the HTML or augment components in your application. So this kind of takes that a step further to where you don't have to, uh, you can kind of layer your component, your directives uh, on top of existing things with a little more easier, more composable way. So. They provide some examples of how you can uh, use the the directive composition there and use different strategies with that. Hey, and also it does enable you to um, do new things and better things with things like Angular 3, uh, which definitely helps out with that. Some of the other things, the image directive is now stable. Uh, and this was along with some of the other things like standalone APIs, they introduced this in V14 or a version of V14 as developer preview. And now it's a lot more stable. Uh, so people can take advantage of using this image directives. That's kind of similar to the uh, image uh, component in like Next.js, something like that, but it's in directive form of Angular, of course. Uh, but you get some of those same features where it handles all the image loading of the images, lazy loading, and things like that. So definitely excited about that feature. And it's available as a standalone uh, import. So we definitely want to see more of that. Uh, another thing, like I said, this thing is packed with features. So looking at the functional router guards uh, with two shakeable APIs, slim down what it takes to write a guard for a route uh, in Angular. Before you had to use this whole thing with a class and injectable provided in root. 
now you can just write a function and using that nice new inject uh, function to inject dependencies and write functional guards that way. And we're kind of, <laughs> we're moving into the, the area of uh, functional, I don't know if we call it, I don't want to call it functional angular, but uh, we're definitely moving in that direction of having a lot of these things uh, be just functions instead of uh, a lot more angular specific um, things like using injectable on top of decorated classes and things like that. Uh, default exports. Uh, I didn't think, you know, I honestly didn't think they were going to land this one uh, because they mentioned it before about the kind of the pitfalls that were happening with uh, uh, default exports and not being able to unwrap those. But you can now default export a lazy com a component and you, then you can lazy load that component in your route and it would just pick it up instead of you having to write out the full import path. Now you can just write out the path to the, the file itself, which is pretty nice. Um, so those are definitely a lot of things that even some of these things that I've taken advantage of before um, that have they have kind of baked into the platform, which is nice. Better stack traces. A very nice one. People love uh, seeing used to used to used to seeing things like zone JS, big blob of stack trace there. And now uh, it's a lot more slimmed down to only targeting like the actual some of the actual errors that you run into there. Another one of the big ones, uh, releasing material do, uh, design components for web. I'm not that familiar with like the whole effort here, but um, you can, of course, you can find out more within the blog post about aligning more with the material design spec and all the changes that went involved, uh, went into that. So. I'm sure that there, of course, there's a uh, migration here that will do the necessary things to your workspace or project to help you move along there. So a lot more things with uh, the CDK that you can do. Uh, here's another good one, and this kind of ties into uh, what we'll get into next with uh, analog uh, improvements in experimental ES build support. ES build is definitely an underlying tool between many different projects. Um, even like Angular is starting to use it now. And uh, Vite uses ES build under the hood. Uh, Remix uses ES build uh, to build the bundles and everything. And it definitely helps with speeding up the pipeline. And so they've improved on that builder, adding watch support and support for SAS and other things. So definitely a thing to check out there. And I'm actually using some of the the compiler plugin for the uh, ES build uh, in analog too. So gonna definitely get a chance to take advantage of some of that too. Uh, automatic imports and language service. That's pretty nice. Of course, we're moving to moving to the new standalone world. And I will do definitely do want to make another video about uh, what this new world looks like uh, for Angular uh, with standalone components and how the tooling kind of helps improve with that. Now, CLI improvements, polyfills using uh, are been able to generate a new standalone component uh, within the Angular CLI or schematics and support for a different way to register polyfills as opposed to having to use a polyfills.ts file. Always glad about community contributions uh, there. More deprecations. They deprecated some things that I I don't think they ever really got a chance to use. One of them being provided in any and provided in ng modules, uh, just because I think they were, um, like I said, they weren't being used that much and they were kind of confusing in some cases. It was easy to uh, jump into like circular, have circular dependencies there. And so deprecating those two things will at least help people move off of that one. And of course, they are moving away from Angular Flex layout. Um, we'll see if, uh, as things go, we'll we'll see if uh, the Hero Devs people pick this up and kind of continue to carry the the torch for that that project and see where it goes from there. Because I know it still has a good number of people that are like downloading it. And so we'll see what's coming on next after this one. This one was packed with features, lots of functions. 
and things. Uh, so we'll continue to see what's going on there. And I'm looking forward to trying it out more. Of course, we'll, the ecosystem will move along the way. And then we'll see uh, what new things come after V15 because there's still the train is still rolling. So we'll see what happens after that. For those of people who are watching later on, hit the like and subscribe. Appreciate that. <laughs> leave a comment if you made it through the video or uh, leave a comment or tell me what you think of stuff we should do, other things, projects we should build and things like that. So.